you talk about new money into the hobby, and, and it's got to be, because I'm sorry, nobody that's been in it for five, ten years is going to spend that kind of money on that book. <laughs> no, man. No. That, shit, that, I think that was me in like uh, 2012, 2013. That, that's some shit I would have done. No, I, no, we wouldn't have done it then, because back then, like a nine eight was a hundred bucks. You get a, a fucking AF fifteen for ten years ago for that price. Right. <laughs> you know, I mean, a one zero or something. But Jesus, I mean, I, I understand. There's probably not many of them right now, but that's only because nobody thought about it, and CGC is behind as hell, and probably nobody's fast passing that puppy, and you know, yeah, I, I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, no, no, it's for the Marvel border. Yeah, yeah, it's the Marvel twenty fifth uh, collectors going nuts. It is. Uh, <laughs> it could be. It could be both. Somebody wow. who didn't get that one yet and just need just uh, like screw it, man. I'm just buying it. <laughs> I can't think but that. But that, that that was definitely a book that you did. you're at least waiting until next month, dude. That I mean, you know that, I mean? that's a twenty fifth anniversary. Books are popular. I, Captain America's. I, there's there's plenty of them to buy raw nine eight candidates. Out I'd there. rather have a Care Bear seven. Nine eight than that. Oh man! Um, <laughs> Take any of those hard to find star uh, Marvel twenty fifth anniversary comics. Oh, well, so here's, the, here's the another one. That, Snake Eyes is great too. It's a lot of good. This one, this one sold for what twenty percent of that. And yeah. it's actually kind of a more interesting character. Yeah, uh, I wish. Uh, I wish George return. was here. He would and talk about a, his set. Probably a lower printed book. So I, I, I'd imagine it's lower printed. Definitely, I mean, just just for yeah, just for the age of it. Um, there's got. I mean, I'm, I would imagine there's probably a whole shit ton less of those graded, especially with CGC being so far behind, even on fast track. You know, like that people. It's taken over two months on. I will get into it, but it's taken over two months on fast track for modern books anyway. So, yeah, you know, not too many people got it. We're able to sub those and get them back fast enough. No, no. So I. I, I mean, I, these are books that I might have bought in at some point. This one I, I still kind of like. I don't think it's got a – I don't know that they're going to use them again, but it's still a cool book. Um, and this price is, is high, but it's not make me laugh high and think, what am I doing? Oh, I, I would have laughed a year ago. I'm not laughing anymore. Right. No, that's, 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 <laughs> reasonable. That's, very, yeah. that's a very reasonable price. That's the thing. Yeah. We're all looking at it going, yeah, that's not bad. <laughs> Dude, that that was that that was the Edge of Spider Verse two nine point eight price a year ago. Yeah, um, right. Yep, I know because I yeah. sold two of them and I'm sad. I don't want to talk about it, Sean. I don't want to talk about yep, that. Let's book let's, let's not talk about that book. <laughs> Forget. Let's just hate on Gwen forever. <laughs> <laughs> Screw it. We're just another one. Assholes. This one. This this one just caught me because it was you know a a three hundred dollar. It wasn't one of the the you know the fancy variants, and I was just like, wow. So that's what's in the trunk, right? Is the suit. It's got to be. Yeah, I, there's some the suit's that there. suit, right? There's some I, some duration. Yeah, it's I mean, what else could it possibly be? It's probably you know? got it's, some <laughs> It's Marcellus Wallace's soul. I bet it's yeah. got some some Black Panther type technology in it though. To to help and Yeah, to help him cuz he's yeah, cuz he's, he's not a super human. individual, so they can they can give him some whiz bangery, you know. He's going to yeah. be the red, white and blue panther. <laughs> uh, if that was an actual comic character uh, i'm pretty sure that would be selling pretty high on spec right now right yeah <laughs> now you've now you've created it somebody's googling that as <laughs> <it's deep. laughs> one of these deviants will post it all right uh going to show some classic books here because i you know we talk about how our brains can't process some of these sales and uh Thirty thousand dollars for a 5.0. Um, Where's Chris at? Chris, you're rich. I, I don't even want to talk about these books. I, I I don't know what I was doing for the last five years. I really don't. What the hell was I, I buying? I have way too many nine eight variants. It's not. What, I spend, my what did anymore. I spend my money on? Oh shit. Um, and it's partner in crime. CBCS Woo! for you guys. This is probably the one book that is not affected by the CBCS price difference, I think. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, you can trust their grades, too. So, I tell you what, I, I still beat myself because I bought that Zatanna 9.6. And maybe like 
two weeks later, I thought, you know, I should buy this. Uh, I should have saved that and just bought this giant size X Men that went up at Comic Link the next week, and and you know nine eight that we ended up going about ten five, and I'm like, yeah, I should have, but I didn't, and now it's fifty thousand dollar book. Yeah, 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 yeah. I actually thought about buying in at twenty, and I just couldn't raise the capital quick enough. It just kept chasing, you know. Every time you think, "Oh, I could do that," and the next thing you know, it's twenty percent more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I just, yeah, it's crazy. Like I said, it, we said last week. Keep saying, "It's it's just uh, <laughs> it's new money." I, I don't know. It might be somebody. Somebody had a million Doge coins, and it's like, "Fuck it." That may Iconic. Be. I'm going GSX one. Get rid of my Doge. I think a lot of it is iconic nostalgia stuff. Some of the yeah. nostalgia books that are selling just based purely 100 percent on nostalgia, and that's what we're we're getting into that big time. Well, I think there's also uh, you're Sean's right though. There's a lot of there are a lot of people making easy money on strange things that wouldn't have made money before. You know whether they're day trading or whatever. So yeah, uh, pull a, yeah pull a one in one Zion is like 20 year old kid in a, in an online break and have them broker it for like 75 grand for you or something. All of a sudden you can, you know what I mean? That didn't, yeah. that didn't happen when we were 21 years old. That didn't well, really, yeah. uh, Secondary and third markets, man, these second and third markets are just blowing everything sky high. One of the, yeah. one of the card shops in town, uh, posted a picture of a guy that came and bought a couple packs at lunch and he freaking pulled 16 K worth of cards. And you're like, son of a bitch. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, two um, cards, 16K, yeah. Oh, all right. So this is one of Sean and I's favorites, and I just I, – I didn't even see it listed. I I don't really know how. I must not have had the search up or I erased it or got frustrated, but uh, Chamber Chills, 19. Maybe it came up and got sold so fast I didn't even see it. I, I don't know. And, I, and all, that, that that's probably what happened because I don't – I have I have it as like phone alerts or I'll manually search. I don't have emails for that or anything. And and it and uh, after watching that what was it the five zero or five five sell for what thirteen, yeah. So I now I know that I will never upgrade my four point five ever. No. So it's just like so I'm good. Like I'm almost like what the hell am I gonna what am I even watching it for? You know what I mean? The only way I'd watch it if it was like a bad like a real bad three day auction, ending at three a.m. That I thought maybe I could you know steal to to turn a profit, but like you know what I mean? Like I just I'm why get I'm your just, hopes up now. Yeah, for that much, for if I've got if I got to spend fifteen thousand dollars to upgrade or something, I'm just like, yeah, I'm over it. I'm good. I'm just gonna. I, I only watch go to my grave happy with mine, or uh, if something goes bad, I'll sell it. So, I only watch these now just for this, so that I can be, you know, see them happen. If, if yeah, but this one, I mean, this one must have just cleared before I even saw the search. It probably sold, probably just sold fast. And like, I mean, I've only looked at, I didn't look it up online. I only looked at the. Uh, it's a these, clean looking one out. These posts of you, that's I mean, that's honestly that's a really a nice deep black. You can almost see the cherry in the cigarette, which is really rare for that book. It's like yeah. the one thing that, that people look for is try to and I don't I don't know if I've ever seen one with a full cherry on there. That one I, just from this picture looks at least fairly close to it. Yeah, it's so, it's a it's a solid uh mullet book, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a couple more golden age books, I think, if Brian kept them in order. Uh Classic Superman 24 2.0 for twelve hundred dollars. I'm really starting to wonder. I, I just don't know if new money is going to move into some of these golden age books or not. It's good. Uh, they're starting to look undervalued again. That I used to say this about five years ago, and I bought a few, and then it blew up. But it, I don't know where it's at. You know, some some books the pre code horrors are going crazy. Some of these other things that are interesting are not. So I I don't know. And do you want this book or do you want John Carter for an extra six hundred? You know do what I mean. What? That that the the, the John Carter nine point eight that was eighteen hundred dollars. Oh yeah, there's oh, stuff oh, like oh, this oh, flying oh. under the radar at twelve hundred bucks, man. It's yeah, like a very I, that's iconic cover. I I don't want to say you know that people should buy all Golden Age, but there's some books there that are like really. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what. Um, I mean, if you think back like 15 years ago, nobody was checking for Golden Age. And then after a while, people, it just kind of, the the market just kind of seeped into Golden Age. And now you have that new money chasing after these new books. And eventually it's going to seep back into the Golden Age. It's it, it's bound to happen. Yeah. Yeah. 
I don't know. So something something to keep in mind. Um, crazy, crazy to just some of these numbers are just intense. Uh, this, I I didn't even look at GPA on this one. I just know uh, first Mighty Mouse one I had not seen very often. Uh, Terry Tunes, uh, sorry Terry Tunes thirty eight. I know some guys have been looking for it. Uh, I don't even have this on my search because it never comes up. But I just caught that one sold and thought it was uh, cool to see the damn thing. For sure. Oh my god, that's amazing. Yeah, I've never seen I've never I've never seen one in person. Uh, I remember our buddy TJ was looking for one for quite a while and couldn't find it. You know, when there's a book mm-hmm. you want to buy and you can't find it, that's yeah. frustrating. You're like, I got the money. Dude, I would toss this shit. I would toss that Captain America 232 like a frisbee. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh shit. Uh Another one that I've shown a few times. I just I didn't even see this one. I I need to ba- add it back to my searches. But uh, oh. this is one of those all time classic covers. Usually gets missed because people don't know what to search for. But uh, under four hundred bucks is a hell of a deal in my mind. Just one of those just crazy things out of the golden age. Was that a Sodi book? Oh, the Seduction of the Innocent Trial. I don't remember. Probably. I don't know off the top of my head though, but it yeah. feels likely. Um, and one more for uh, you guys: uh, Real Life Three, the the classic uh, Schomburg Hitler to- cover, a six five resto one for three K. Um, this book is <coughs> notoriously scarce, so if one pops up, they usually move pretty quick. Wow. Um, hopefully, one of you. Deviants watching or that watches regularly caught this bad boy. Uh, we talked about this book last week as a 9 8 sold for a crap ton. This is the no price variant. Uh, somebody got a nice copy for 285 bucks. One bid. I don't know if it was a buy it now type thing or what. So I know uh, that the variants exist, but I've, isn't there? So there's more than just the price and no price though, right? I think, I think it's got the barcode, is when I looked at it, I, I kind of saw that and I went, huh. I, I, think, I, there is, I think there's like a dollar twenty five and like a dollar fifty or something like that. There's multiple variants to this one. Okay. Uh, uh, I think it was uh, JJ Maxwell was talking about it last episode or maybe during the, the top ten. Um, but there is multiple variants to this. Yeah. So, I don't hey know. John, can you go back to that uh, issue before this right that uh, you just had? So it's funny that you put this up. Uh, you go ahead and take it down real quick for a second. So I saw this on a uh, yeah yeah. So uh, she she basically says that at Golden Age Comic Buyer the cousins say hi and there's three of them graded. So Anna Love just killing it out there. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, crazy. I saw that post and I was like, oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's you know one of my favorites, uh, Crow nine two straight auction eleven fifty. I mean that used to be. You could buy three or four of them for that price a couple, maybe a year ago, maybe a year and a half. And, hey, John, uh, try not to hit your desk. Sorry. Um, <laughs> it's I a did, crow book, though, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Got I it, did I, yeah. see Comic Link, the, the uh, upcoming auction, the auction just started, has a 9-8 blue label up. There has not been one of those up in probably two years, let alone one at straight auction. So I am... Uh, Real interested to see where that price ends. In my head, it's six k. But as talking to Nico, he's like, "Hell, it could just as easily be eight or sixteen or six. Who knows, man?" Mark, you said com- Comic Link. Yeah, mm. it's it's so, twenty days out and it's already at thirty four hundred. It's Oof. a clean nine two. Maybe there's some closer up defects around the back, but yeah, that looks a tough one to see. And yeah, it can be fingerprints and all kinds of crap on it. I just sold a, a third print number one and number two and a second print three and a first print four, all kind of mid grades for 600 bucks. So it's people are buying. Um, there's one for Brian, three pack of Thundercats. I feel like he's probably got one of these in his pile somewhere. Yeah, that's a sweet thing. I do not have the Thundercats, but I have the three pack that is the uh the top book is secret wars seven the middle book is secret wars eight and the bottom book is secret wars nine in a three pack hmm, i wish okay. i had that one too fucking dope 
man, I had some nice uh, Star Wars ones at one point, but I, this this you used to buy for twenty bucks, ten bucks even sometimes. Yep. I mean, I remember this book being five dollars forever. It's crazy. Um, there's one for Sean, two for Sean. Ooh, nice newsstands. I mean, those used to trend closer together, didn't they? Um. Yeah, I feel. Yeah, they did. Uh, Twelve. I don't know. The Skeletor has more like just a little more like cultish of a collection of people. I, I'm one of them, so I, I pay more attention to them. So any the Skeletor stuff is like um, the rare stuff always sells for a little more. Um, uh, it looks like, I mean, look, there's one bid and two bids. Um, it, it drives me crazy, except when I'm in on the auctions, when people start with the high reserve price on books that would go for a good amount. Yeah. Like you just don't get as many watchers off the jump. Like, you no, know what no. I mean? You, you get, you start, if you start either of these books I, and I can't tell you they would have sold for more or less necessarily, but you start them in a, you start them in a dollar and it's a hot book or something like that. But you, you started, a, you get it 500, you start at 500 be like, oh, I was hoping I could get that for four. You know what I mean? You just, you get yeah. more watchers and that, and it just, and, and eBay algorithms, I assume probably brings it up more because more people want to see it. Um, I, yeah, I, I haven't looked at, at GPA, I really, do, I don't think I've seen, I don't think I've seen a twelve go for eight hundred bucks before. No. Um, my 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 set's newsstand, but it's it's CBCS, and I don't give a shit because they're mine. You know what I mean? Like I, I'm completely fine with CB, CBCS for the PC books and stuff. Well, so, CBCS had that col- or that uh, pedigree they called it. Yeah, uh, had a shit ton of copper age. Nickel City. Nickel City. Yeah. My, and those. That's actually what mine are. I actually actually won two sets of them and uh at different times and i think and i sold one set for like 300 for the set but the oh. good thing was it was to uh uh it was on ebay but it was to one of one of our friends daryl so i was i was i'm happy that he at least the person who got them for me still has them in his pc so that, yeah that, right. that that's good but the prices they went down for a long time these are 100 and something dollar nine eights yeah they were after, after initial um a lot but it, it was never made sense to me because i'd sell I'd sell the raw set a lot for like 80 bucks or a hundred bucks. And I was like, you know, in the nine eights weren't that much more, but yeah, this is, this is good. This is, this is, yeah. National <laughs> universe selling for a lot means all my books are worth a lot more money that like I never bought to be worth money. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Nostalgia. Yeah. Um, Here's one. First, uh, gray Hulk, Mr. Fix it 300 bucks for a nine, eight it's starting to feel cheap to me. Yeah. Uh, our friend the red chair um this one was in because it's actually a low sale but uh just put things in perspective you can have two of these for the john walker yeah get out of here <laughs> is that is that how downtrodden dc is right now like should we all be buying dc i, I don't even absolutely. know absolutely yes 100 percent. yes dc and golden age i guess yeah they're, uh, they're, they're they're the properties are too valuable to fail in my opinion like, you know, people don't know about DC Comics, this and that. Trust me, there, there's somebody that out there that thinks they can work it out, whether or not they end up selling or they shut down comics for a short amount of time or if the movies aren't coming as well. I mean, partnering with HBO is a good thing, you know? Yeah. In my opinion, I mean, that, I mean that's that's a high production value uh, studio there. They Some can, of they the can greatest tread, shows of all time. They can trust yeah. the uh, more adult line too, which is where they do better. Like oh, that's yeah. Where, that's why their animation is always so good at it. It's adult based, you know, hardcore where everything on the CW is kind of fluff. Mm-hmm. Is there a price change in newsstand on this? Absolutely. I don't I don't know what it is, but yeah. it's more. For sure. But this was trending over a grand. I had it on the market report not too long ago and it was over a grand. Well, what year's this book? Like like 1980? 81? Yeah, probably 182. So it's not gonna be it's it's not one of those like where it's going to be extraordinarily that much more rare in newsstand. I mean, uh, you know, there's still always a premium because people like the newsstand. Ugh, so ugly. Um, another <laughs> book that you know, actually, maybe under the not under the radar, but uh, you just don't see a lot of it. Yeah. Yep. And we more shit we, I sold too early. Whatever. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Me too. <laughs> I mean, Comic Pro is also, is notoriously a mess for getting books out. 
It's also one of those books that you sometimes just don't want to mention. Yeah, well, I do. <laughs> but I mean, it's a number one variant, it, and it's and I mean, it's cool, and it, I guess it is. I don't remember what I think we used to know what the print run was a few hundred or something was, like that. I thought it was five hundred, maybe. Yeah, that makes that make that makes sense to me. But like you know, uh, it, it's but it's silk one. It's not it's not the first appearance of silk. No, you know. So you know, and even as Spider Man one is first Cindy Moon. You know, not not Spider Man four. That's just first silk, and nobody cares about that because there's seven hundred thousand covers. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, and you could just find them cheap forever. So, you know, I do prefer that four is the book over number one in that series, but, you know, this is the only Silk One really. Well, I guess, yeah. I don't know. She's had a lot of series too at this point. So, true. All right. Um, this was just, I, I didn't believe it. I had to do a double tape. Um, Ec <laughs> Ecto Kid by Clive Barker, 225 for 98. So at this point, I'm starting to just cruise the bins looking for nine eights, not necessarily caring what the book is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cruising for nine eights. It's not a bad it strategy. It, is. it doesn't matter. It's a nine eight. What? Ah, I'm going to grade it. I don't care. Ah. <laughs> I've, I, I've randomly done that. Uh, just sheer boredom. Just sitting around at, at like uh, when uh, like my wife chooses a TV show. Um, just sure. on the eBay app, you know, like the CGC 9.8 auction only sort by ending soonest. Yeah. Be like, can I get some cheap shit real quick? <laughs> you know, <laughs> just look through whatever the hell's floating around that, that <laughs> afternoon, that evening, you know, or once yeah, we'll more. about it. I don't know if I would have spent 225 on it. Okay. No. But, yeah. <laughs> but I would have found something. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Wonder World saying Clive fans. I, I get it. It's just, who. Um, Here's one newsstand double cover. Hmm. Six fifty one. Okay. Yeah, newsstand double cover. That makes sense at six fifty. I, I was watching this one and I was like, oh, I should bid and I just I just couldn't do it. I I just backed out. But I don't think it was a I don't know if it's a bad price or not a bad price, who knows? Well it's got the Mandarin. What if we see this Psylocke in Shang Chi? <laughs> that would be awesome. That would right? be dope. All of a sudden, dude. The Jim Lee Silver Sidelock si comes out. <laughs> All right. Um, there, CBCS. This one, a, a slight discount on this guy. It was a one bidder, so, you know, you never know. But it, I think I think sometimes that's CBCS, people doing it to themselves is they they do a lot more, you know, high, high start auction because they're afraid of getting their butts kicked. And, you know, sometimes it happens. Trust me. Oh, yeah. Sometimes oh, you yeah. leave. The grand on the table. Eh, people trying to catch a fish, you know what I mean. And then you then you don't bid on it. You hope they lower it the next week and then keep running at the same price. And you quit watching their books. But, so, I don't know. Just I, I don't I don't I don't have a problem with CBCS. People just say I don't put them on the book report. I just find them harder to kind of compare sometimes. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, it ha unfortunately, has to be a rare book because if it's selling for less, it's less likely to be on a market report. So, yeah. Um, and I like to feature more straight auctions as often as I can, just because it gives you a little better feel of things. But uh, we talked about Thunderbolts. This one in my head's like, really? I mean, and I get it, I, but I don't. I'll tell you what. If that were a newsstand, I would. That would seem reasonable. Maybe. You know, I mean, but yeah, that's a whole different ballpark here. I, Hell, even a second print yeah. is more reasonable. There's a lot of this book, isn't there? And I mean, it's not the first appearance, it's the first title. I, I don't know what I think of this one. I, I'm not there's trying also, to figure it out. There's also a bunch of previews, too, right, of this book that are in a bunch of wizard magazines and stuff. Oh. Mm. Interesting. <clears throat> Uh, another one kind of rising with the tide of, you know, spec, the War of Realms, Agents of Atlas one. Um, this one seems to have a little more legs in my mind of, of something that's probably going to get, you know, get turned around at some point. 350. Yeah. I I just, I think the Thunderbolts throws me because it's not a first, but then you got the Hulk. I, I don't know. I don't know what I think of that one. I hate when the spec is messy. Um, here, here's a lot of raw books. Hmm. Uh, 12, uh, 
Oh, her bishops. <laughs> that probably both all of us in our head are like, that would have been ninety five bucks not too long ago. Yeah, so I should have kept the twelve I sold for uh four to twelve dollars each in my life and waited till twenty twenty one. Yeah. Fifteen hundred bucks, huh? All right. That's something that a lot of people are doing now. They're doing these type of set sa- these type of sales, just blowing stuff out. How about people there? going warehouse fine lot? Yeah, like well, you just happen to have one, yeah. Warehouse fine lot, but some are newsstand and some are regular. Yeah, okay. Well, that's that's where the gamble is. It's absolute I mean, bullshit, I, dude. Just somebody's fucking lying. No, you know I know. What I mean? But let's say you know if you looked at it over and you felt pretty good that the they're got a shot at some nine eights, you can make especially if those newsstands hit. But I mean, that's a big gamble. That's a big gamble. There's only three pictures, so you have to. Yeah. A heck of a gamble. I'm not even sure Sean can do uh, eagle eye on a 12 versus 12 <laughs> no. picture run. And you can't. And those are they're glossy. I can't tell if those are bagged and boarded in the pick or not. But like, yeah, you know, you just you just need more picks because the light isn't going to hit the things you want it to hit, and you can change your phone or camera angle to make it not hit the light that way. Well, so, probably yeah. whoever bought it's going to look at them and return them if not. Or it's a newbie and they don't care. Yeah. <laughs> um, Flashpoint, another book that, you know, probably if it were Marvel would be three times the price right now. Well, the recent news from, you know, Michael Keaton confirmed to play Batman in the Flash movie is probably pushing this a little bit. Or is that news too too new? Uh, it probably happened right at, I mean, this was yesterday. I, I don't know. I just I, in my head, this is this is DC just being behind on stuff. I, like it would be twice that in a Marvel book. Uh, this one just you know people looking for other Psylocke books to, to chase. Some of her single uh, issue or her for uh, solo runner. Some good covers floating around. Yeah, that's a great David Finch cover. Yeah, there's and that was I mean. I did. I remember years ago. That was one of the, one of the first after New Fifty Two, Marvel Now, and then Psylocke Rumors. That the first and second print, or that whole miniseries, actually. Yeah. Was like what early spec book that people could you know come in. It dropped forever, so I almost like quit. Uh, not not in person, but almost like looking online for these things. And what 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 was a uh, once was old is new again. Yeah. But nine point that doesn't seem terrible for one nine point eight though. Honestly, no, I didn't think so. That, that sort of Braddock book was also real big for a while. I, I had a bunch, and I, I don't ever think I had probably. I don't ever think I had a nine point eight candidate. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see, just a couple more. Looks like uh, this one was like, "What the fudge?" Mm-hmm. I Smart like. Spec. I mean, wow. She, a week ago, this book was five hundred. <laughs> yeah, like, legit. Because I was because tra- I because I was look- rummaging through uh, my uh, CGCs, I saw this and I was like, "Oh, what's this going for?" And it was going for five hundred. So what happened? Well, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. All the variants in this run are freaking great. All these the twenty yeah. one and twenty fives are amazing, and this is one of the best wo- Wolverine variants. Period, in my opinion, this is that homage to when he came out of the sewers and what was that like two thirty two or something. And he, he it was like his coming out moment as uh, yep. Wolverine. Yeah, Dope. and I mean if you're if you're specking on X twenty three in our future at all, like you tie her into you're tying her into Gabby, and she's like one of the you know. It's just it's a good tie in. It's a it's a good spec buy. Uh everything else everything else has gone nuts. You know what I mean? This I is mean, one I, I'd probably rather have uh if you're gonna spend that much on a on a spec modern variant and in the same wheelhouse you can have the um Moon Girl Devil Moon Girl Devil Dinosaur one uh one in twenty five ninety eight, I think probably for about the similar price these days and could have had it cheaper last month. And that's and that's a guarantee. <laughs> that's a guarantee. This is it'll this be more next too. month. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, no. pretty sure. All right, I got a couple forums to share just because. Well, I'm trying to trying to be fair and do hit everything. This one's deceptive. Uh, Fantastic Four one and X Men one for two grand. 
Uh, the Fantastic Four is water stained as heck, and the X Men is, you know, probably a, a 2.0. So these are very low grade books, but for 2K, uh, these used to be had for a couple hundred bucks a pop. Uh, they do not come up often. The La Prenzas of the, of the uh, um, Marvel Silver Age books are, are kind of like that first forums that everybody's kind of familiar with and seen a bit. Uh, so these are all kind of starting to catch some heat. Um, if they were decent copies, I know uh, a buddy of mine paid uh, several K for a 5.0 of the X-Men one, and that probably is a deal even now. Um, and then this one actually shocked the shit out of me. I was actually looking to find this sale, and I happened to find this one because I was looking at La Princess. Um, this is that non-canon Spidey run um, with the Vampirella cover, one that I've never managed to acquire. It's not a super copy. I mean, I think it's nice and presentable but there's some corner dings and damage and some tearing um it's missing a little bit on, a, on one of the corners um so so a nice mid mid grade for 2500 which was a hell of a sale uh it's in the late part of the run so it's very tough to find anything those last five or six books are almost impossible in this non-canon uh, i don't have most of them i think i've got a couple of the 181s which is the big witty one but uh, especially the last three just don't come up that often. And this is a huge bump in price. It was a $500 book not too long ago, then a thousand and now it's 2,500 it appears. So. Wow. <laughs> wow. I want to remind everybody to make sure to like and subscribe. Make sure to go check out the channel. we got a bunch of other great shows over there, uh, new shows every night of the week. As you guys can see, a bunch of uh, uh, great curated playlists over there of uh, our most recent stuff. So make sure you guys go check it out. Hit that bell, like, and subscribe. Uh, do does us a lot of good over there in the YouTube analytics. All right, so this is interesting. This is a 1979 Kenner Star Wars display of the uh, Boba Fett, the launching missile as you can see there uh it's the actual display that uh, came out where everybody would send in to get their figure sold for twelve hundred dollars it's in horrible condition but great piece of uh, action figure history right there these have been selling like crazy so these special action figure sets i think they were um uh exclusive to like some were exclusive to target or some were exclusive to to walmart but a lot if you see these sets no matter who they are, it's worth looking up because they sell for a lot of money. And there was a lot sold over this last couple of weeks. This is the 501st Legion Troopers, uh, the ARC Troopers, which everybody went crazy for the ARC Troopers when they first came out in the three and three quarter action figure sets. They first came out in the Clone Wars uh, uh, figures, and they were just huge, fig uh, huge in the resale market, uh, huge resale value in the, in the secondary market for many years. And... Um, this is a newer version. You could see 30 bids, $162 for the ARC Trooper set. All right. Um, another one of those things, like, you would never know. This is a McDonald's Legos Bionicles, the six-piece uh, set, complete set, unopened, sold for $137. This is the type of thing that you could probably find at garage sales or flea markets. Again, these Bionicles sell for a lot of money. All right, I talk about Battle Beasts all the time. This one was crazy. I couldn't believe it sold what? for this much. Yeah. This is a laser Battle Beast, uh, number 102, plus the weapon, sold for $790 for th with 39 bids. It must be Jeez. a super rare Battle Beast. Um, if anybody knows why this Battle Beast sells for so much or what it is, let us know. Uh, people have been sending us in the information like this from past episodes, and I have uh, somebody answered a question from last episode that I'll get to later. So if anybody knows about this Battle Beast, uh, make sure to comment on the YouTube video after we're done being live. This is kind of cool. When Dick Tracy came out, the Warren Beatty Madonna film, it was huge. And I remember going to see it and wanting all the toys. And the blank figure was the hardest one to find. It was impossible to find the blank figure. Even then, we all knew, why can't we find blank? Did they even make it? It's on the back. You couldn't find it. Here's an unopened version sold for $1,300 with 44 bids. Crazy. And you can see how yellowed the bubble is. We talked about this last week. Um, how you got to be careful with the bubbled action figures and you know how they can get damaged. But here's a really yellowed bun that sold for $1,300. You guys remember this figure? Oh, hell yeah. 
I, I, I legit had every Dick Tracy figure except <laughs> Mike, except. And yeah. in 2021, something with no face still sells for more than Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. This one I talk about all the time. This is one of the f- things that we first talked about when we got into action figures. One of the figures, uh, this is the Fantastic Four Classics Dragon Man figure. It always sells for big money. Not this type of money, but usually like 250 300 uh, It'll sell for that now uh, in loose, I imagine. This, along with the Spider-Hulk figure, any of those early uh, you know, Spider-Classic figures are worth money. There are a lot of all these old uh, Toy Biz figures towards the end of the run that were really hard to find. The Mysterio is another one that sell for a lot of money. So keep your eyes open on these types of figures. It's crazy. This is uh, homies. Back to the to the little homies. I found this one. This is a set. Uh, it has a ton of the the figures for six hundred dollars. So it's just cool to see that these are selling. This blew me away. So I have even more than this to show you. But some of these Jurassic Park toys sell for unreal amounts. Uh, the the any of the Jurassic Park toys sell for money. Some of them sell for this type of money or more, thousands. So keep your eye out for these Jurassic Park, old school Jurassic Park figures or, or toys, even loose. I imagine they sell for a lot of money. Here's this kind of cool shout out to Ultra Maximus. If you guys aren't watching the Wednesday night presser, uh, make sure you guys check it out. Every Wednesday night, Ultra Maximus goes through the new books of the week, uh, just really killing it over there. And as you guys know, Ultra Maximus is a uh, big, big story transformers guy and this uh was really interesting because he talked about uh this story wanting this figure as a kid and all this stuff and here's one unopened uh i don't know if it's never been played with but the box is all there sold for 835 dollars 39 bits cool to see what these things sell for yeah i that's why this is why i don't look up toys because i would have had a hard time not bidding on that yep because yeah yeah, because that is fucking awesome yeah this is cool. Uh, this is a big part of my childhood. I uh, shout out to the Absolute Geek guys. Uh, I, I, I talked about this on an old episode of theirs. Um, when I was a kid, I was G- I, obviously I've talked about G.I. Joe being my favorite thing, but I remember this figure coming out and I, and I wanted it so bad. And my mom finally f- sat down. We filled out the little thing and you get to name it and call it whatever you want and give it the abilities that you want and, you know, t- it, make it a, a commando or a ninja or whatever. And you could do all this stuff and they sent you back a little, you know, printed out. You could see it there on the right, the little printed out old school printer a thing that tells all of your character stats, the name and everything, but it came with a, a figure. And this is the Steel Brigade figure. The gold-headed ones are more rare. So as you can see, an unopened gold-headed one with just the figure sold for $1,150. Uh, but a regular one with the, the bio, and this is exactly what I have. Uh, I have the box and everything. Um, sold for $332 with 38 bids. But the interesting thing is, and I think I've talked about this video before. I called my my figure. It's called the rapper. I swear <laughs> yeah, to God. Oh, now I remember the story. Yeah. yeah. He's called the rapper. He was a ninja that specialized in laser weapons. <laughs> That's what seven-year-old McClay was uh, was uh, thinking about at, at seven years old. So, um, yeah, big, big shout out to G.I. Joe letting us name our own figures. <laughs> This is a G.I. Joe I've never seen before. This is a, an Estrella G.I. Joe. I think these are Brazilian, and uh, I've never seen this. This is a Tiger Force. It looks like Lifeline, but it doesn't look like Lifeline in the art, and it's got a little tiger with it, and I wonder if that is like Snake Eyes is, you know, if that's Wolf, like if that's the like a repaint or what, but this is a crazy figure I've never seen before, and I just love seeing these type of figures. Uh, very few of them that I've never seen before. This sold for eight hundred dollars, eighteen bids, carded, which just blew me away. Like you never think you'd see some of these figures carded from third world countries at the time. So wait, are we specking on uh, foreign toys? <laughs> we are. We are, did man. You, did you just like have to one up me? <laughs> <laughs> 230 people watching live please you guys hit the like button the thumbs up button it helps us a lot make sure you guys subscribe hit that bell 
here is something interesting. I don't know if you guys remember this from your childhood, but I definitely remember seeing this figure around when I was a kid, uh, different toy boxes from friends or gas stations or something. This is Skull Man, the warrior beast figure from Remco, early like He-Man type figure, uh, sold for $677 carded, 18 bids. This is a major Star Wars figure. So do you guys know the story of Snaggletooth, the Star Wars figure? Yeah. No. Super, super rare figure. Uh, there's two different types, right? There is the, the red. Uh, right? yeah, yep, the blue and the red. Um, and the blue one is one of the rarest figures in Star Wars. Uh, a couple of these sold... This week, I saw multiple ones, and they sold for about this price. But um, this is uh, interesting. 36 bids, $1,000 for the blue Snaggletooth. And I guess there's a variant where it has a dent in the boot. So uh, pretty cool to see this guy being sold. I think this was some type of, uh, if I remember correctly, the blue Snaggletooth was some type of uh, send-away figure, right? I don't remember that detail, but probably. So so there let's let's find out what the toe dent is live right all right uh so uh origins of the blue snaggle tooth let's just give this people some love here we'll go live talking about this origins of the blue snaggle tooth the elusive blue snaggle tooth in near mint condition is one of the rarest most difficult figures to find um the favorite blue alien hit the market nearly four decades ago as production mistake. When Kenner's toy designers were making the prototype, the only visual research they had for the character was a grainy black and white photo of the character's head. Lacking significant details from the Lucasfilm, the Kenner designers essentially made a guess to the color blue and height, average human height. When Star Wars hit the big screen, Kenner's producers saw to their amusement that Snaggletooth was about three feet tall and wore a red suit. So the three and three quarter inch blue suited alien was scrapped and quickly replaced in the short stouter red figure. Um, and uh, there, the taller blue, snag blue snaggle tooth was never sold singularly, tucked inside a plastic bubble attached to a card back. Instead, you had to purchase him as a Sears Cantina adventure set. Hmm. So, and um, there is a variant, of course, with the toe dent. So. Pretty interesting stuff. I love figures like that. And it's cool to see uh, when they sell. We can talk about the history of the figure. This is interesting. Uh, Mar Mortal Kombat's Oops. coming out. Looks dope as hell. Mortal Kombat figures sell for a lot. Certain ones sell for a ton. This one, the Storm Shadow. Uh, I mean, the Sub-Zero Storm Collectibles Mortal Kombat figure. Reptile. I don't know why it says Reptile, but it looks like Sub-Zero. Sold for $648.44. All right, so one of the things that we talked about last week. Oh, actually, before I get to this, let's do this. This is freaking cool. So we talked about, uh, I think, a couple of these cards last week. It was an NWA card, and I saw some more. This is a 1991 Premier Rat Pack NWA PSA 10 sold for $557. A Ice Cube same set sold for $355. And another Ice Cube in the same set sold for $224. So this is crazy. Absolutely crazy. This is one we talked about last week, and we couldn't figure out why these sell for so much. So shout out to Cover Panel on IG who hit me up and said, hey, watch the show. Saw you were asking about the Magic Card Revise Packs. They don't have the Black Lotus or other big eight cards in them, but the Revise set has been growing in value with everything else. It does have dual lands in them and a few other big cards like the Wheel of Fortune, Copy Artifact, and some other cards. However, you have to be super careful buying loose packs like this. Magic cards are notorious for being searched. The packaging is see-through in the white part, and you can actually push each card up to the top and bend the pack a little bit to see the rest of the cards in the pack. So mm -hmm. people knew where the rare cards were and would push them to the top. So he said these look like they actually could have been searched. You can kind of see um, where the the they have like creases at the top yeah. of the white pack, like where they're pushing them and stretch marks. So... Just a shout out to everybody out there that are magic collectors that don't know about uh, unopened product and how they're very searchable. Um, I don't know if I'd spend twenty seven hundred dollars on sixty three search packs, but somebody did. So, yeah, <laughs> that is the end of our market.